In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to do a Ken Burns effect using just the Edius tools alone. For many years, I just <laughs> went out to After Effects to do this, to prepare my still shots for use in a documentary. But uh, these days, you can get pretty much the same effect uh, using just the Edius tools themselves. And if some of you are wondering, well, what is a Ken Burns effect? Ken Burns is a producer of a number of historical type documentaries where most of the film has to deal with historical events that there may not have been a lot of film cameras to record and so he kind of developed this technique of slowly pushing into the still photograph to kind of give that feel of motion uh, as if you're zooming in and gives it just a little bit more of a film feel or or as if the, the event was was actually captured with a film camera rather than just a still camera. So how to do that uh, in Edius? Let's take a look here. I've got a little hole here in my documentary where um, we're talking about building a school, but how just before the school was built that the uh, organization also helped this village build a health clinic. Well, I didn't actually film any shots of the health clinic, but I did take a still shot, and we have that here. And uh, so we can drop this uh, still or photograph into our video and cover the hole that we need that way. So let's drag and drop this still shot. Now, when you drop a still shot onto a high definition timeline, chances are that it's not going to quite fill the whole screen. You'll notice that we have black borders on each side. And at first you might wonder, well, what's, what's wrong? Because I know that this still shot is a much higher resolution than 1920 by 1080. Why isn't it filling the whole shot? Well, it has more to do with the aspect ratio that your still camera is shooting uh, normal shots with, as opposed to the aspect ratio of your high definition projects. And unless you have specifically chosen uh, a menu setting on your still camera that allows you to have wide aspect ratio shots, it's not going to fill the screen, even though it is actually much higher resolution than 1920 by 1080. So that's why you have the black, but you don't have to leave the black uh, edges to your still shots there. Let's go in, well, first of all, let's uh, drop it into our shot. By default, any still shot is going to drop onto your timeline at a length of five seconds. You can change the actual length that a a still clip is going to come onto your timeline by default uh, under user settings. Let's go up to settings, choose user settings. Yeah, under source, check duration. And here, one of your options is to change the duration of your still image. So if you know that you're going to be working with a lot of still images that you would just prefer to be 10 seconds rather than 5 seconds by default, well, you can change that here. Change it to any amount, really. You probably wouldn't uh, need to worry about having it any more than 10 seconds. Of course, once it's on the timeline, it's very easy to extend it out as long as you want just by grabbing any end of it. Okay, but let's pop it into our hole and discover how we can not only fill the screen, but also do a little bit of a Ken Burns effect using the Layouter tool of Edius. Let's just right click on the media and go to Layouter. You can also use F7. And uh, you should get a dialog box. Looks something like this. Uh, if it isn't there by default, it should be in the Transform tab up here rather than the Crop. And you'll see a representation of your clip showing up here. And you'll notice that there, the black borders are being represented by the fact that this box is not stretched out to the edge. Notice what happens as we grab hold of the edge, any corner here, and start expanding this out. And as we bring it right down to the edge there and let our mouse clip go, we'll see that we are now filling up our whole screen with that shot. And if it doesn't have a pleasing composition, to your eye, you can uh, make a few adjustments just by taking your mouse and pointing to this area here and say push it up a little bit so that uh, you have a, a little bit more 
of the uh, bottom area showing up or if you prefer the other direction so you can move it around if you need to you can actually zoom in a lot more to the shot because this is a high resolution mm -hmm. shot that's a full res JPEG it's coming in at about 5,000 a little over 5,000 pixels in width because this is a horizontal shot and so I've got lots of room to play with here before I start losing any definition or resolution to my shot. If you're curious to know uh, where you're at on your shot, you can scroll down the little scroller here. You'll see that I'm only at 41% of the full resolution of my shot. And so I could zoom into this shot a lot before I got to 100%. And with still shots, if they're fairly good quality, you can even go beyond your 100% and still look fairly good. So there's lots of room to play with in this. And that's a good reason to, when you're wanting to do this Ken Burns effect, is to have your client send you as high a resolution as possible so that you have the flexibility to work with it as much as you can. A lot of times when you ask a client to send you some of their shots, uh, what they'll do often is send their Facebook resolution. And so it won't even be a high definition resolution. You know, they, they might only be 800 pixels in width. And uh, it just doesn't work very well in a high definition project. So when you're emailing your client to uh, ask them to send you the still shots, I always be sure to ask them to send you the highest resolution possible that they have, preferably the camera resolution size, where nobody's gone in and resized it for the internet. Hopefully, at least your shot will, will be maybe uh, 2,500 pixels, 3,000 pixels, and then you have lots of room to zoom into your shot. Uh, or actually move your shot around to compose it. Okay, we don't need this much. And since we've gone beyond our, well, we can expand this out and still be able to get at these corners. But uh, let's just bring it in just a little bit. And the way to do the Ken Burns effect is to uh, slide this little playhead inside of our tool here right to the very edge of your still shot you'll notice down here on your timeline that as you move this playhead you're also moving the playhead on the timeline itself so what the what we want to do is set a keyframe right at the first frame of our clips and you can start that process by clicking here in layouter and then i go over here and click on add the keyframes and it'll go ahead and add all of the keyframes for all of the options here we don't really need all of these options but it's just I find easier just to click them all and then uh, take your cursor or your playhead right to the end of where that clip is and you might even want to go a little bit further if it allows you to maybe it doesn't um, if you wanted to be adding a dissolve we should maybe do that first let's hit OK on this and go back to our timeline and add our dissolve first and on the other end as well and then that lets Edius know that you're wanting to extend your um, effect out further or at least it gives you the option of doing that to start your effect right as the dissolve starts you wouldn't necessarily have to. I mean, if you would prefer to have it a stable shot and, uh, until you get into it for two or three seconds and then start the push in, you could do that. But this uh, putting the dissolves in first at least allows you the option of deciding uh, when you open up your layouter tool here of uh, where you want to start that. You'll notice now that we've added the dissolve that our keyframes have pushed in. By adding that uh, dissolve, we've actually added more frames to our still shot to work with. But at this point, we could actually just grab a hold of any one of these and slide them back so that our keyframe now again starts at the first frame of where the dissolve starts. Okay, and then we can uh, move our playhead across until it gets to the end of that dissolve and uh, add another keyframe. We could either do it this way or just by pointing to any of the corners and starting to pull it out just a little bit. When we let our mouse go, we'll see that Edius adds the amount of keyframes. And the 
the key here is not to add very much of a uh, an increase or, or don't push into your shot very much. The idea is that you want this just to be a subtle, almost unobservable push in. Uh, you, you hardly want the viewer to know what's happening. They get a feel that something is happening, but it's such a slow, subtle push in that uh, they may be not even be conscious that something is happening. So let's take a look at this. They have finished a health clinic and are now building a new school. And that's about right. You know, you could play around with that if you wanted to have a little bit faster or slower zoom. You can go back into your uh, tool, your layouter tool. By putting your playhead right over top of the keyframes and making adjustments here by pointing to any one of these corners and pushing it in just a hair in order to make it a little bit slower of a push into the shot. If you wanted to make it a little faster push in, you'd want to pull it out just a little bit. Another way to do it is to scroll down here and find this percentage point here. And with your cursor over top of the keyframe that you want to change, you could slowly push this up just a little bit and you'll see the box moves as well. Uh, and by pushing it up, it would make your zoom in a little bit quicker. If you pulled it down just a little bit, it would make your zoom just a little bit smaller. So you see what's happening here is that even though I forgot to shoot some video of the health clinic, I guess I wasn't quite sure that the client wanted that uh, shot. I did manage to get a nice still shot of it, but now, because we're doing just a little slight push in, most viewers won't catch on to the fact that this is a still shot. Because of the slow push in, it looks like it's a video of the clinic, and it's just doing kind of a, a slow push in with your video camera. And that can kind of save your butt if you happen to get a still of something but didn't get the actual video. Or you may also find that there are times when your client has images that they have shot that they want you to use to help illustrate the script that you might not have even visited the sites. But because they have the still shots, you can pop them on the timeline and with this little Ken Burns effect, give people the feel that it is still video that they're watching rather than a bunch of still shots. I'm not sure that it's actually <laughs> fair or right to give Ken Burns all the credit on this little move. I'm sure we would have all been doing this whether he started it or not, but he did seem to be the one to get the claim to fame on this originating this idea. Uh, and so he is the one that the whole move is called after. Usually if anybody's been doing video at all, documentaries at all, they will have heard of this or if someone asks you, can you do a Ken Burns effect on this? Well, you know what we're talking about it by just using that phrase. All right, for now that does it for how to do a Ken Burns effect with Edius 7.